Hello and welcome to my brand new podcast. I'm Nikki Raby and I'm thrilled that you're joining us. I do lots of things. I'm an actor, coach, writer, speaker and a mum. And in my coaching work, I work with creatives, personal brands, freelancers and small businesses. In this podcast, I want to talk about success, but not in the traditional sense. I want to bring you conversations that discuss success, what it means, and how there are many different versions. We're going to be talking about business, branding, becoming visible, saying no, saying yes, and how you can create a thriving portfolio career doing more of what you love and less of what you don't. Sometimes there can be a certain mystery around the online world, so I'm going to be asking my guests how they started and grew, how they get paid, how they stand out, and how they create success on their terms. As always, please check the show notes for all things we mention and come and say hi over on social media at Nikki Raby or via my website, nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast. In today's episode, I talk to my friend and actress, Indra Ove, who has been in the industry for many years and works across television, film and theatre, and she is amazing at what she does. It's a personal one for me today. I met Indra in my second job after leaving drama school, and I only now really know what a key person she was in my career. And we talk about this a little bit in the episode. Indra at the time had two small children, but was fully present in her career, was still able to be creative. And for some reason, probably because people told me that there was this expectation as a woman that you had to choose to be a creative or to be able to have children and to see at the age of 21 that Indra was doing that very effortlessly I'm sure there was all kinds of chaos behind the scenes you know life is real and all that but it was so fundamental for me to see at that point and now as a 36 year old with a small son and being able to be creative it's a wonderful thing I hope you enjoy this episode there's lots of laughs and lots of of um, great stories that she has to share. Hi, Indra. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. So, if people don't know you, um, start by saying like what you do and uh, what's your job title. Um, I'm an actress. Um, job title actress. <laughs> That's what the I'm passport. Doing. Yeah, exactly. And how How did it start for you? Acting? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, it started a very long time ago. I've been doing this a lot of years now. Um, My initial... um, Yeah, my first kind of entry into the profession was when I was 11 and I did a children's TV series. So I suppose that was my first taste of it. Um... Which I absolutely loved Did because, you miss school? yeah, because <laughs> I missed school. I yeah. was going to say that, of course, and it was quite a big chunk of school because it was like a six-part children's series. So we were doing six one hours. It was for ITV, and um, it was set in Pimlico. So it was, we were all London-based, but it meant missing school, which really? is just <laughs> incredible, and having fun on set recreating these characters. Um, so I got so that was my first real taste of what it was like and my mum quickly said all right that's enough now get back to school forget about it till you know after your own levels yeah back in school yeah yeah don't think this is going to be a norm night so my mum was was yeah she'll probably come up again in this school was a was a great leveler yeah um and so I went back into school but what it meant is that I had, I had discovered something. So I continued to do drama classes out of school on the weekends and things like that. So I got the bug, I suppose, at about 11 years old. Um, I took my mum's advice. I did school, did O levels, and then decided, yeah, I'm going to go to drama school. Uh, applied to central school, well, applied to RADA, drama center, central, maybe one other I can't remember now, didn't get into RADA, 
got into Central, very happy. Did Central, went there for three years. And you're still mates with all those girls, aren't you? I'm still mates with a lot of people from there. Yeah, yeah, really. I'm mates with very, very close friends. And a lot, we all kind of keep each in contact with each other over Facebook and stuff. But yeah, made some really proper friends at Central. Had an amazing time there. Um, and I think if anybody's ever thinks about whether to do drama school or not, I think it's a great thing to do because it's uh, a place where you can fail, mm. where you can experiment and you can fail in the comfort of, of a school, of a, you know, of a centre that's going to look after you. Yeah. But you can take great risks, which is something that gets much harder to do when you're in our real profession. So it was great for that, for, for discovering oneself and in my final year drama school, three months before the end, in your final year, you'll do public shows and you invite agents in and casting people and all of that. And I got cast in a job. So I left school three months early and got launched into the profession. So I was incredibly lucky. So I got an agent and I got a job before my course had even finished. Me too. And you kind of go, Ooh, okay, this is what I want. This is what I wanted. Oh, God. <laughs> It's terrifying, yeah. yeah. And my school didn't make it easy either. They were going, you're letting the school down. You really shouldn't do this. You're yeah. you're with a company already. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, so they didn't make it easy making that choice either. So mm. I really had to make the choice on my own and take that risk yeah. of leaving drama school and going into the real world. Um, and I'm very pleased I did. Um, and I, like, as I say, I got a fabulous agent. It was a great role and it, it launched my career. Um, and then funnily enough, actually, then I think the next play I did, um, was actually, I got given a part by Stephen Daldry when he was running the Gate Theatre because he had been teaching us at Central. Yeah. He was just a, a struggling wannabe yeah. director. Wearing cords. <laughs> oh, totally wearing cords, wearing cords, all a bit of a mishmash, looking slightly out of place. Yeah. Teaching us at school, feeling a bit uncomfortable. Um, I got on incredibly well with him, and then he he then. When I left Central, he left, and he went to run the Gate Theatre. I did my telly job and then came back, and he gave me my first theatre job at the Gate. You know, no money, nothing, yeah. Stephen Daldry. Packet of crisps and a sandwich, thanks <laughs> very much. I'm happy. I'm happy. And, and that's how my career begun. And did it, did it continue with that momentum? It did, actually. I was really fortunate. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of springboarded into it. And as I say, I did those two jobs very early. Then I suddenly, I very quickly got a job with Trevor Nunn at the Young Vic doing Time of Athens. Um, there are very few women in it and the parts are small. But it, and it was um, David Suchet, Suchet in the lead. Um, and that was phenomenal. So suddenly I was working with the bigwigs, you know, I was there with Trevor Nunn, I was at the Young Vic, um, and it meant I could sit in rehearsals and watch David Suchet work and watch all these fantastic people and really kind of learn my trade. So, yeah, it did. I I was very, very lucky at the start and of my talented. career. <laughs> and talented. Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> and then how did the America jump go? Did you ever live there? Were you back and forth? The America or? thing happened to me because um, I, I then, I can't work out the years we're talking, but at some point in the early stages of my acting career, I lost my mum. Um, and my mum ran shops, amazing shops, local shops called Doodoo Doo Boutique, one in Camden, one in Swiss Cottage. My mum suddenly died and I wasn't ready to give up her shop because it had been in my life all my life. Um, I was kind of born into it, literally. So that was something for me to cling on to. And I said, I'm going to run it, though she had said, don't do it, follow your acting career. I said, no, 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 I'm going to run it. So I was doing these jobs and running this shop. And I remember being at the counter, serving people, suddenly the phone went, you know, you hang, hello, Doodoo Boutiques. And it was my agent. And they were like, Indra, you've got to go to an audition now. Oh. 
in the middle of the day, no warning, nothing. Um, she's just coming. <laughs> she's, exactly. Um, and there I'm trying to serve people, swing fly through my agent's like, you've got to get, um, and it was at the Groucho Club, you've got to get to the Groucho Club, you've got probably about an hour to get there. Neil Jordan wants to see you for this new film, Interview the Vampire. Okay. Um, it's starring Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. So suddenly I'm in the shop. So I've got to get cover. I've got to get a girl in Come and cover me because I'm working. You've you got know, dress as a vampire on the way. I've not got a guess agenda. Well, she she's not a vampire, but I was told I had to look very sexy. Right, that I was going up for a lady of the night. So I had to get cover, get someone to come to the shop, rush home put on a mini skirt or whatever I did, throw something together to make me look sexy and get myself to the other side of town right. into an audition that, you know, I had no preparation. I mean, I know things are bad today, but that was really crazy. Yeah. Um, but there's a certain, I don't know, the adrenaline. I mean, yeah. there's a kind of thrill that goes with that. So I ran into, ta- into town and I'm young, I'm in my 20s excited obviously running there's Neil Jordan sitting in this great big sofa um came and sat down with him initially it was just a chat um they gave me a few lines to read and that was it and I was gone I was like, oh my god you know, did that just happen did that just happen the Hollywood bloody movie and I'm here in Groucho's chatting to the director yeah um, so obviously I can't put that out of my mind. I'm then back to the shop doing my day job, working, selling dresses. And then I think it was, it was a week or so later, I then got a call back saying they want to see you again. You've got to get to Pinewood Studios. I was given a bit more time this, this time round. Um, sent a script to look at and that they would be filming in me at Pinewood. So that was lovely. So I had time to prepare, choose what I want to wear, read the scripts, go to Pinewood. And um, they had a handheld camera, which, again, is very different to today. Um, Neil John was there. They had someone with a handheld camera. And they had a young actor who was pretending to be Tom Cruise. And they made us kind of act out these scenes. And they filmed us doing it. Well, I went for it. I didn't hold back. I thought the potential of Hollywood and Tom Cruise and, you know, it was just too much, you know. So I gave it my absolute all. And a week later, I got the part. So it was phenomenal. So that, I then made the film, obviously. And on the back of Interview with the Vampire, that took me to Los Angeles. Mm. They invited me over there for the premiere, uh, put me up in a beautiful hotel, um, did the whole premiere thing, went to a million parties, networked, schmoozed, a lot of schmoozing with some very wonderful people. I mean, that film was full of amazing people. Met a colossal amount of people. So that took me to LA. They they were putting me up for a couple of weeks and I extended my stay um, because suddenly I had all this intro. It was a huge film. Yeah. And it was huge in America. And suddenly arriving there and seeing yourself on kind of billboards and on the front of magazines. <laughs> and all that. I was like, oh my God. So I was like, well, let me stay. Stay as long as I possibly can. So I stayed probably three or four months that time and got an agent got a manager and then you know and in a way I would have stayed longer but I had the responsibility of my mum's shop back in London and and everything that goes with losing a parent you know selling the house blah 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 and on one hand you're feeling so hyped and excited but then underneath that clearly there's the emotion and all yeah. Yeah, exactly. The life transition. The life yeah. transition of losing a mum. And that's a, an extraordinary thing because you're, you're, you were kind of, I was taken to dizzy heights. I mean, literally. Um, and I wasn't able just to pursue that, you know, and that's where it's very into the, the conflict of real life versus this kind of glamorous world of yeah. Hollywood, you know, and we all have that yes. and we're all faced with that. And, uh, you know, and it was really serious. So I had to come back. I had huge responsibilities. It's a kind of regret I live with. But um, had I done it the other way around, I think the regret would have been greater. Yeah. So I think I honoured the right thing, as it were. 
um, my responsibilities, my home, my mum, all of that. I had to come back and do that. So I kind of left Hollywood. But what it meant is I'd I'd set that up. Mm-hmm. I'd met I'd uh, had a network of people. I had an agent. I met friends and all of that stuff. So I'd got my foot in the door. Yes, and that's so important that no matter what happens, you're never starting from scratch. You're always building up. And I yes. know so many people who listen to this, they go, I've just started this new career or like I was an actor and now I'm a writer. I feel like I'm entering in. It's like, no, you bring all that life experience and um, yeah, day-to-day and talent and all of that, the skills, all that stuff to the table. To the table. Yeah, 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 exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't go for nothing. And the real life all go, goes yeah. with it, you know, and especially as an actor. Um that feeds us it feeds us as a, as creatives so none of it is wasted um so then i came back to london and obviously had and kept pursuing my career I and mean, it was a phenomenal break and that opened me up into the kind of film industry and it was after that I did several films i did othello with lawrence fishburne i did the fifth element um, oh, I can't even remember. But I did a succession of really nice movies on the back of that. So it certainly opened that up. And then it meant that I kept on going back to LA um, because then I had an agent. So yeah. I'd go over for auditions and meetings and all that sort of stuff. Um, I've always found it very hard uh, giving up London and and going, you know, full in. full in. And I think that's a hard decision for us as actors to, you know, unless you're unless you're given a series or given something, just to go and play the game is quite a hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, but I had opened that. And then years and years later, um, when I was married and had children, we went back to LA and we did a year when my kids were about, uh, what were they, seven and nine. And how was that phase? So that was that was very different and 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 lovely actually because then I was with my husband. I had two kids, so you're going with a family unit, which is lovely. It's very very comforting rather than being there at 23 and being very much on my <laughs> wandering own, around. wandering around and 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 not knowing the city and not knowing really quite how to deal with it. And it's quite frightening, and it's quite frightening as a 23 year old and mm. the world of producers and. Um, yeah dodgy goings on and you know and parties and all that it's quite a lot to take on yes um and i it really makes me admire those young actresses especially who make it work from a very young age yeah and and understand it because i found it overwhelming mm. so to go back with my husband with my kids was was the monkeys who you are who you are <laughs> no <laughs> no exactly yeah and that's lovely because it's really comforting and really really grounding um so it was great going back and we went for a year so we rented out our house in london we um have friends in la from before and and uh and they had found us a lovely place we found a beautiful school so we kind of set up home um, again, and having a school was great yes. because that anchors you. And you meet people. You and meet you're part people. Of the routine, yeah. Especially as actors, and I hear it so often. It's the in between bits. It's the should I have coffee with I have, or I've got nothing in my diary today. Yeah. Or I don't really know where my life is going. You're just hanging about and waiting. Waiting. For home. Yeah. 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 And that's where you know. That's out. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's where I'm actually. Having kids is no bad thing as an actor, and it, it's a it's a funny thing when you get to that stage and you're making those decisions. And I remember I was always told, "Whatever you do, don't do it; it will ruin your career." Um, and then finally, not listening to those people and going, "Well, I want to do it anyway, so I'm yes. going to do it." And then actually going, "Well, it it, it grounds me, and um, and it gives me something that's greater and more important than the industry." And I think it's a hugely leveling thing to do and actually the career doesn't forget you you know if you're if you're still active and interested in what you do it doesn't let you go and I, I it didn't let me go and you bring um, different things to the table and you bring different things to the table of course you do because you're not just bringing a needy actor who wants to work um, you're bringing well you know life at home is good so I'm here and I need to make it count and how yeah. I'm 
have you got? And I um, remember, I don't know if I said this, but I remember when we were doing Living Under One Roof and I was in that, it was like my second job out of drama school and I was 21 and you, I think you had both boys at that stage. Yes, I did. But I was just thinking, oh, good, that is somebody who can do that. Because in my head, right. I thought I would love to, I would love to have kids, and it was very much in my plan. But for some reason, whatever is filtered down, it was like a decision that like you have the children or you have the career. Yeah, and yes. it and so watching you doing, I was like, oh, there is somebody out there because I was thinking even three years before, I never met an actor who I just who, who had, had kids, no, or or at all. Oh, really? at all. Like, I was like, it was. I was just like a young kid in Lincoln, just thinking, I'd really like to make that my career, but I don't really know how to do it. I'm going to go to drama school, but I didn't know anybody who was doing it. And so when I saw you, I was like, oh, okay, you can do it, and making that juggle work. And um, it was really refreshing, and it was so nice when I went to an audition the other day where I could do that for somebody else because yeah. this girl who was sort of ten years younger, she was like, oh. But, well, it's kind of good that you can do that as well. Because I'd sort of written it off and I said, no, please no, don't. don't. So it was such a full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moment. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, it's really important then, isn't it, yeah. that we're there and doing it. And, and and one does make it work. And it's a juggle. But, you know, anybody who's got kids knows that juggle. Um but but we make it work, yeah. and the industry makes it work. Yeah. And, yeah, there are certain jobs you can't do, obviously. You can't go away as easily. I mean, what's been fortunate for me, because my husband is also in the industry, he's on the other side, is – so we're both freelance – so he goes off and does a job and I'll be home with the kids and then it's my turn to go and do the job and here yes. have the kids. So we've always made that work very well. We've always shared um, the kids' responsibilities. Um, and also, it also means you get great long chunks with your kids when you're yes. not working as an actor, um, which if you're working a nine to five, you don't get that. You know, mm. we get three or four months solid just no. with my kids day in and day out. And then you're like, I really needed that. No, I really need that. <laughs> See ya! Bye! <laughs> oh, good, it's a long one. Amazing! We obviously love our children, but it's, yeah, sometimes yeah. it's hard. It's hard. It's, hard it... it's much easier to go out to work than to stay at home, I think. I but, think. Yeah. I think, yes. So, how, in the, I guess, in those moments of like yes. when you're when you're not working how do you stay creative like what do you have daily things that you do how do you kind of keep your hand in? especially I guess when the boys were little when you're like because of time restraints I guess you can't do all the things that you want to do no no you can't so you you do whatever you've got to do with your kids <laughs> <laughs> and that's huge and demanding and full on um for me I've I've always been um a very physical person um way back when I I danced as a as a young person I think that's always made me need that in my life so for me I've always either done dance classes or go to the gym or do the classes at the gym or go running and now I'm doing yoga I've always had something and that's vital mm. for me and I'm not prepared to give that up um, at any cost. Yes. And all my family know that. <laughs> so they they give me that, thank God. And as soon as my kids were big enough to go to the creche at the gym, I was back in the gym yeah. doing my class, doing that. And that gives me instant sanity. Mm. Um, I find it incredibly grounding. I get rid of that that energy that yeah. madness yeah. exactly burn it off somehow um feel calm feel good about myself yes. which I think is really important for us actors um so that is precious to me and I've always done it and I will continue to do it because I know it works for me yes. and I like to do it in the morning so therefore I've got it done and then I can start my day and I feel like I've done something very positive yeah. um, so for me that that's vital um, then I, I need to I need to see stuff I need to go to the theatre 
again, that's something I, I make a priority and always have. And obviously when you've got kids, it's hard to get bloody anywhere, but I would try and make that work. See film, see yeah. theater. Um, for me, it's really important. It's really nourishing as a, as a performer to go yes. to the theatre and see stuff. And it doesn't demand anything of you. It, all it is is it's nurturing. And it, even if you don't love the play, whenever I've gone to a theatre, I've never regretted it. No, I've no. I've gone, well, that was a waste of time. I mean, maybe there was a couple. But, you know, yeah. generally. But even if they're really, yeah. really, really, really bad, there's still something. And it still provokes a great yeah, dialogue. Like scream at the, the <laughs> Yeah, exactly but, yeah. but even like you know even if it gets you angry it's no bad thing yeah. and and f- you know if you're a creative person you're also looking at why is it bad and what mm. they've done wrong and god I wouldn't do that and, and sometimes you go well if they can do that and sell tickets and it's all what, I, what am I doing how can I push myself forward exactly exactly and that there's there must therefore be room for us all you know yeah. if this is getting up there then why can't I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, and and how important is like your network and people who you spend your time with being for you? Because I know that you always have you like whenever you're doing something, you always have such a great circle of support. I always yes. get that sense that yes, people indeed. are in your corner, but you are in you're in their corner, you're in my corner, you're in you know so many people. So how important is that being for you? Oh God, it's so important, Nikki. Um, yeah, I I do. I have a very strong network of people um, who I love and need, and so I support them, and hopefully they support me. Um, I've got a, a, a big friendship circle that comes kind of from my school life. I've lived in London all my life. I've never mm. moved away apart from my little stints off to Los Angeles, but I've always been here. So I've got a big network of people just from being born and bred in London. Yeah. And that's phenomenal. Um, I've also got four brothers and sisters. So that that expands yes. your you amount of people you already <laughs> fill the table exactly and, family, and all like, the people that yeah. that come with the family yeah. you know yeah. that um and and yeah and, and we are all very res- supportive of each other and a lot of those friends are made up of school friends but also of acting friends that I've taken along the way um and and we get, I go to their plays, they come to my plays. I have a lovely group of people who come to everything I do. Um, and, and that's vital because when you're not working mm-hmm. and times are hard, you've got a good strong body of people that yeah. you can dip in and out of and see and, and be inspired by yes. as well. And you know, assurance of like, it doesn't mean that you're any less of a person. It's just a quiet time. It's just a quiet you time. You don't need to go down that. I don't know, self-destruct or whatever it is, or just sitting under a duvet yeah. watching TV that you can pull yourself out of. Out of, it. exactly, exactly. And and friends are very, very good for that. I remember the beginning of this, I know it's the only, it's only February now, but I... I've, I've been very busy recently, which has been incredible. And then I got this funny, quiet patch. I don't know why it's like, it's not unusual. It's what we all have all the time. Yeah. And I just wasn't coping very well with it. And all my friends were on the phone going, Indra, come on, come on, be here <laughs> come on, you know. And um, my stepmom, who lives in Trinidad, phoned me up the other day and she said, enjoy the downtime enjoy the downtime you've got to enjoy the downtime (laughs) and I was like that's just bloody genius of course it is Sunny you're not busy and you're not running around London you've got time you've got space and enjoy that and that became so real for me Mm. and you kind of go all that stuff that you're meant to do and catch up on you kind of go okay I can do that now and I can do it in a really nice calm way I can be supportive to my kids who are doing GCSEs and A levels right now and I can do that and I can give a bit there and I can do that and I can go and see a matinee and I can and you kind of go oh okay and I can go and see what other friends are doing yeah and and top yourself up top yourself up yeah Yeah. it's really interesting and actually last year I was away a friend had a birthday and they did a lovely weekend in the countryside and I remember very late at night talking to this wonderful woman and she was saying but you know she said we're we're all so obsessive about getting the job and as soon as we finish one job we want the next job and she said to me she said but as an artist you have to have the time out as well Otherwise, 
you, you're kind of on a treadmill and you get into overload and yeah. how are you going to make new decisions and be fresh and bring something and she said the time out is as important and it's interesting they used to call it resting <laughs> Yes. And actors used to rest and it wasn't looked down upon. Because it's exhausting. Because it's exhausting. It's so full on and so demanding of everything. Um, And then you don't see anybody, you know, and you don't see any friends. You barely see your family. So it takes you completely away. So the the idea that it used to once come time be called resting and you would rest and you would, you know, refill and, and, and... and I think, God, I don't know why that got changed. We obviously live in a faster time now. Yes. And we put higher demands on ourselves. And that thing of, like, you're working or you're not, you're valid or you're not. And actually, you you have to maintain that sense of, I'm always valid. I'm always valid. Yes. I'm always valid. And, you know, if you think the writer has to go off and spend months writing, mm. um, you know, a director will disappear and think about what he knows. You know, everyone's given that time, and I think we have to take it. Yes. And really learn how to take it, and then fill it with other things that give you joy, whether, like like I say, it's doing a dance class, or I've got friends now who are, choirs have become a big thing. I know with my friends who are doing lovely singing stuff, and we fill the time with that, and meeting new people, and going to art galleries, and... And just being part of the world. Yes. Oh, that's so key. You know, just being part of it and living it and, you know, and observing life and taking it in, which will then fill back into into your next jobs. Of course. And when you think about the number of years that you've been in the industry, what has kept you going throughout that? What's what's kept fueling you going right I'm going to just keep going even if it's tough because uh, sometimes uh, across your career and most people on the whole have that moment of like do I still want to do this does it light me up whether or not it's a serious thing you can kind of play with that idea of oh, I wonder what it would be like to do something else what's, yeah, what's yeah. Oh, I've, I've definitely had those moments very seriously had those moments and thought about giving up the, the most I, I had a real uh, yeah, that really hit me probably seven or eight years ago. I felt really down in it. I felt like I wasn't getting the parts. I wasn't seen being seen for the... You know, I just got had hit, hit a really tricky period mm. and it didn't feel like it was working for me. And I got very low about it. And I thought, what can I do? And I thought, I can teach. Mm. Um, and... So I pursued that. I had a very good friend of mine, writer-director, who's always taught. He's always, always taught. He's a very, very busy writer-director. But he's always taught and made that priority. And it's always fascinated me. Yes. So I approached him one day and I said, can I come and watch you with the potential of coming to assist you? And and I did. And then he got a job and he went off and he he gave me his class. So he said, okay, you've been watching it for so many weeks. I've now got to go to New York to direct (laughs) something. It's yours. Here you go. I don't bet that was way more nerve-wracking. It was going, hi, Tom, Bruce, hi, Brad. But it's like, oh, God, these kids might judge me. Oh, absolutely. It was the scariest thing. And suddenly you kind of gone, I want to do that. And suddenly it was being offered. You know, it was suddenly someone went, yeah, here you are. You want to do it? Here you are. I was like, oh, my God. Am I actually equipped to, to teach this thing that I do? Yeah. And I do kind of instinctively, mm. to, in a sense, now, you know, my training was so long ago. Yes. So having to rethink that and thinking, God, how do I pass this on? And it was, it was the best thing I ever did. I bloody loved it. Um, I found the kids a total inspiration. I started reading all these fantastic books about teaching and reading from great teachers. And I really loved it. And I've, um, and the school that I teach at, Wack Arts, um, is a fantastic performing arts school. Everybody, everybody there uh, is a professional teacher. They're, they're, they're working in their profession. Yes. So the singers are singers. The drum teachers are drum. You know, we're all doing what we do professionally. Yes. Um, the school knows that. So it has a system um, where everybody can cover each other's classes. Um, and... I've, I'm still doing it now. So whenever I'm not acting, I'm on the phone to them saying, I've got three months or I've got until the next job. I don't know how yeah. long it's going to be. Please, can you give me employment? And they do. And I find it so rewarding. 
so rewarding. I think it's, it's such a fantastic thing. It makes me it makes me feel good because I'm handing over something to the kids. The kids are feeling good because they're gaining something. Um, we have a lot of fun in the room. And it teaches me about acting mm. again. And I find yeah. there an, an inspiration. I'm having to think about it, mm. pull it all apart in order to, to hand it to them. So I'm thinking about my profession, what I do. And... And giving back is such a fantastic thing to do. It makes you feel so good. Yes. So I've found that teaching is a brilliant thing to have alongside yeah. my profession. And fortunately, I work in a place where I can juggle it. And for them to know that what they're learning is coming from a fresh place. It's yeah. not like, I remember back in 1954. And I'm not saying oh. that is not valid information but sometimes it's not relatable to the person who is hearing it and no. it's really no yeah, and they they the love the fact that they then go oh I miss you on telly last night yeah. or they're seeing oh, you oh yeah. <laughs> 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 my god miss you did that and um, I was teaching I was in the Curious Incident of the Dog in the West End and I was teaching them some my dad still talks about his does he it was fantastic I love the play it was so good did he come twice they did didn't he he was like, I'm going to whole family. I was like, wow, all right, then. So funny. <laughs> so funny. And he now talks about it like he wrote it. Does <laughs> he? My, yeah, I was My like, yeah, I mean, firstly, I wrote the book. Really, Dad. Yeah. But That's that was great for you doing all those different roles, wasn't it? That was fantastic. Doing all those different roles and all those different roles. But I continued to teach in the daytime after rehearsal. I mean, once yeah. we were kind of, because it was a year's contract. I said to Wack, I can still teach. So I was teaching these kids and then rushing off to the theatre. So the energy that they were getting in the room, and I was, you know, coming straight from the stage to them, then back on the stage. So classes were fabulous. They were so excited. And then I took them all. I got incredibly reduced tickets, got them all in for a fiver, and they all came and watched it and couldn't believe it. And then they all came on stage and came backstage and met all the actors and all that. So it was just phenomenal. It was phenomenal. And they were, you know, it was electrifying for them. And And very, very tangible. For like... For years, oh, for so years. Like they're still talking about it. Yeah, sure. yeah, they are. In fact, I've met a couple of them in the street. And they've since left school and everything, and they're still excited oh. about it and and utterly inspired. Amazing. You know, and it really gave them a sense of that they can do this too, and that they can be on the stage. Yes. You know, yes. and it starts in the classroom, but they can they can get there because they may not be getting that information in any other situation. No, because no. You know, I'm not going to go too political, but arts funding and all of that sort of stuff, it's not as readily available. No, it isn't. Our schools are suffering. One last question for you. Yes. Yes. Where would you like to be in five years' time? Ah, I'd like, that's a good question, Nikki. Where would I like to be in five years' time? Um, I'm, I'm feeling now that I'm getting to a lovely stage in my career when I'm feeling like a proper jobbing actress mm. which is a very nice thing to do where I'm I'm crossing I'm doing both lovely theatre and nice telly I would love for that to continue in the way that it has and for that work to be continuous as much as it can be we can't work all the time but you know because we're, we're resting <laughs> and we need to rest but um to feel like you know the thing about being an actor, which is so hard, is when we we don't feel like we're part of the system, yeah. that we're part of it, and we feel isolated on our own. And that's really terrifying and lonely and frightening as an actor. Mm. And it feels so nice when you feel like you're part of that community and you're a go-to, who they will go to. Yes. Um, I don't want to speak too soon because you never know when it's going to change. But that's that's what... I dream and hope for yeah. being a, a, a solid member of that community um, and really part of it and 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 known and trusted yes. for one's work. So you you just get the calls and yeah. they come. Oh, you, you get the call. Job, you do the job. It, you then, smash it, yeah. and then you have time for your home and your rest of your life. You know that's what I'd really ideally like to be. We still talk about 
going to LA once the kids uh, in uni and all that. So that's a possibility as well. But I still have, you know, and I love LA and would like to do that. But it's very nice to do it in your own home yeah. as well. I think I think we all feel that, you know, you want to break it in your own city. So I would just like it to really continue and be really a close part of our network. Watch this space. Watch this space. This is so lovely. I love chatting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, much Nikki. And yeah, the new things that are coming out, I will share all the links as I'm yes. going to be revealed. Yes, so when absolutely. They go live. But, yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Nikki. Bye. Cheers. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to hear what you thought of the episode and share any takeaways with me. Come and find me across social media at Nikki Raby or you can visit the podcast page nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast. <laughs>